Well guys, today I have travelled from Wales into England to Clifton Coffee Roasters. I've been given the opportunity to come around and check out the facility. Clifton Coffee Roasters have been supporting me for the last 12 months. I met up with Paul, who's now the head of Clifton Coffee Roasters, uh, just over 12 months ago, and we started the whole relationship. And this is the first opportunity I've had to come down to the facility and take a look around. So if you're into coffee, if you nerd out on coffee, if you just love coffee in general, you're gonna love this. So we're kicking things off in the roasting section and the storage section, I suppose you could call it. You have beans here by the absolute ton. Like, there's beans everywhere. But weirdly, there's there's no smell of beans here as such. Like, you know that smell that you know of when you wake up in the morning? You don't get that here. Well, at least in not, not this section then. This is where the beans are being stored prior to being roasted. And we have sacks that are there on the... Um, on the side of the room there. These, for example, are being sent out to cafes uh, and other places that are going to be brewing these beans this week. And here we have the roasting area. And there's a couple of roasters here, not just one. Uh, they're Diedrich Roasters, hope I'm saying that right, all the way from the US. Um, it is a funky piece of kit, let me tell you. Um, it's sort of a human and machine working in perfect harmony. Um, I, like, we joked that, like, what we could see on the screen was a bit like a VO2 Max test or an FTP ramp test or something. Like, it, it, it kind of looked like, um, like you were just waiting for time to pass and then you would mark on the, on the graph, like, when, uh, when the time was to, to pop the beans out and things like that. It was very much similar to a fitness test. It was quite funny in a way. Um, but the beans are in there doing their thing. They're going around and as they're starting to come up to temperature, um, they're really uh, changing in flavors. So we had a little taste, a little flavor taste on the nose, um, kind of halfway through, and then they get spat out. And they get spat out into a massive drum. Uh, and this thing sort of sucks a lot of air around, tries to cool the beans as quickly as possible. Um, I kind of, a bit like scrambled eggs. You know, sometimes when you're making eggs, uh, you leave them too long and they're still cooking. Well, it's kind of like the same process, like you've got them to the exact uh, point that you want the bean and then when you pop them out you really don't want them to, to cook anymore. So that was the the process and it was a heck of a lot quicker than I thought it was. Now there is a byproduct to roasting coffee beans and this is called the husk. It does have a slight smell to it but nothing like a coffee bean per se. Um, but this can be used and recycled. And then up here... <laughs> And this is our workshop, so like a big part of what we do is looking after machines, so like... Oh wow! Um, has it seen some use? It seems some use, yeah. Seen some use. Yeah. It's seen some syrup as well. Seen some syrup. Spillage <laughs> inside. Yeah. Well, uh, how old's that machine? Do you know? Uh, I don't know actually. The lounge. Uh, here we go. It's actually so old. It's, it's rubbed off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So like we deal with machines like old and new, old destroyed machines that need to be fully kept in. But yeah, this is the main kind of really lovely bits of equipment out. Tea coffee, everything to try basically, which is really nice. Is um, this where you do the courses and the... That's actually next door, so we've got oh, another okay. room. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't finished yet, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, but yeah, it's the main showroom area where we kind of show off all the new bits of kit. We've got all our main house coffee set up, um, right from kind of suspension espresso, which is Brazil, Village, which is a Brazil-Honduras blend, E1, which is a, an El Salvador uh, single origin, and then our kind of flagship uh, seasonal espresso called Cadence Espresso, um, mm. which is all based around kind of change and, and movement of, of yeah. coffees. That should be changing at the end of the year as well to a new version. Um, do you want an espresso drink before we go in to the other area? Do you want anything? Well, funny enough, I have a lot of coffee today. Oh, I have a because you're coming here, yeah. Yeah, I did actually. <laughs> yeah. What do you fancy, man? Do you want a flaggy, espresso? What do you fancy? Yeah, I'll have a... Also, don't be angry to just... For you. Thank you. That's Cadence as well. So 50% uh, Burundi natural process and 50% Rwanda natural process. So yeah, it, it just brews insanely good coffee and it's presented really well. So like mm. if you were stood that side of the bar, you'd be like, where's your coffee machine? Like it's <laughs> completely different, isn't it, you know? 
And it's all about removing that customer service barrier. Um, yeah, it's all quite a uh, simple system actually. So that's, the, that's controlling the brew heads, and then that's doing the steam. Um, yeah, it's kind of a cool little system. Yeah. My area basically. Um, it's all set up. We'll be back in a couple minutes, guys. All right, if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like. I really, really appreciate it. And the next part of this video is going to be giving you a little bit of a taste of what's to come in the next couple of videos. We did a cupping session where we did some blind tasting. Uh, I got to do some slipping techniques as well. And uh, we also got to learn about, uh, like, you know, V60 and AeroPress techniques. So stick around for those because they're really interesting and insightful. It's great to hear from the minds of Paul and James, who are total experts at this game. So it's like minimizing your... Uh, That'll be blind so for me see. anyway, I think. <laughs> 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 it will be tasting you know, much, you know, completely different um, kind of design or something like that as well. That's actually pretty low retention. It doesn't hold on to much. And then go for that one, mate. I'll just crack on. So it should be quite light, quite tea-like. More like a filter coffee that you normally drink. Kind of usage. Mm. Yeah. Enough. Very jasmine. Mm. Some brewers you may have not used before as well. Leave it bloom for a little longer. Yeah, it's quite coarse. Yeah, you get quite a much cleaner cup that way with an AeroPress. I think a lot of things that people do when they're finished brewing, they'll do that little. <laughs> Pull back, pull back thing and it stops any drips so you can literally carry it to your sink or whatever and like empty it out. The grind size, how much finer that is, it's more, mm. much more fine. You can see just by the colour, right? So that's the AeroPress on the right and that's the pour over there. Even though it was com completely different, fine, you're getting much more sediment in the, in the cup on the right. 